Hello guys, hello everyone. Welcome to the game of Light Fellowship of Lux, published by Com to us. So, the video today will be about, yeah, a little bit of something, yeah, a little bit of exploration, a little bit of the arena, and maybe a little bit of the summon. Yeah, don't worry, the summon won't be a massive summon. Yeah, don't have so many scrolls. And I have been busy in past few days. So the exploration, with the introduction of the Atmos, yeah, especially the Atmos, the exploration has gotten harder, yeah. Maybe I will say all because of the Atmos. The Atmos and Prospera. Yeah, it's like, whenever they release a new hero, this also means that in the exploration, the new hero will be, pre will be present there, yeah. They'll be present there and cause us a lot of trouble. So I think this team should be okay. Yeah, I know there are some there are some hero that I shouldn't bring here, but well, let's just try it. Never mind. Let's see. Yeah, let's see what do I have some more. How about I just bring the team that I use for for the team arena? Yeah. So Ramia, sorry not this, Zama, Morox, who some more did I use? Serena, Ref, Lin, Tiat, yeah. So yeah, I just bring the one that I use for the for the team arena. Fifteen of them. Fifteen. Maybe like this. Yeah, tanker in between. Healer put it the last. Maybe Tia will go first. Okay, let's just do it. Yeah, I haven't upgrade. Yeah, I haven't upgrade the. Yeah, I'm not sure what skill we call the skill that we can use for the exploration, like the healing. Yeah, I haven't upgrade them because I'm a little bit stingy on spending the gold. So what's the key and the most important point in doing the exploration? The first 3 rounds, if you guys want to auto it, yes, you can auto, or maybe the first 6 rounds. The reason why auto is not that good is because, yeah, they like to use a the skill, they like to simply use a skill. Even though when your enemy is just left with one normal attack that could kill that enemy off in the stage but it's like wow the car all will activate his active yeah we do the whole process of activating the active wow 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 that's dangerous too bad yeah not focusing on that sorry The most important point is to actually, yes, keep a lot of energy bars, keep a lot. Because once you enter the stage, this is what you will do, immediately disable them, yeah, non-stop. Yeah, when you see in this condition, there is only left with one hero, yeah, slowly kill, yes, kill them as slow as possible. So that you can generate more energy to be used in the next round.
Wow, so heavy a protection. The dangerous part here is actually the opponent's power that could actually pose threat. Yeah. Well, I better shield myself first. Whoa. If the power is dead, then yeah, then I can delay it. Yes, now is the time for me to generate the energy bar. Okay, don't use skill. Get your cooldown and get your energy bar. Most importantly, burst off or kill off the DPS at the back first. Yeah. Then slowly take your time to kill the tanker or the healer. Yeah. If it is possible. Well, for this situation, there is like two powerful healer and one tanker. So yeah, I have to at least kill one of them. Otherwise, the match will go will go on very long. Yeah. So it's okay. My energy bar is still full. I have five energy bar and almost all my hero cooldown is ready. So yeah, my Lizzie is ready. So I will start off with Lizzie first, definitely. Yeah. And then I will stun them one more time with my Atmos, open my shield. Okay, yeah, their, their hero are seriously too squishy here. Start off with Divana first, protect myself. Hopefully they don't interrupt me. Wow, lucky. Whoa, Atmos. Okay, I'm too slow, so my cowl is gone. Yeah, just like in a blink of eye, my cowl is dead. So that is, that is how dangerous a Kaor can be, especially a transcendent Kaor. So yeah, if I want to talk about Lizzie and Kaor, so a lot of players are debating which is better, Lizzie or Kaor. Let me finish this first. Otherwise, I may lose focus when talking about something else. Yeah, luckily, stage 12, 12 over 12 is actually an easy stage. No Atmos, so it is easy. So, if a stage, if a stage got Atmos or Zammer, then yeah, the stage could be hard. Yeah, if there is also Cardus there. So a lot of people is actually debating about debating about Kaor or Lizzie is better. So both of them actually almost the same. Yeah, they are three both of them is almost the same. Okay? The first two auto is actually doing some area damage and the active is hitting all enemies. So they're almost the same. The only difference is Kaor Yes, Kaor active skill sequence start with his first sorry, start with his active skill first. Which means that when you click Kaor, Kaor will use his active skill. Yes, the big blue meteor ball fall down from the sky. And since it is an active skill, which means that he is guaranteed to hit with his active skill. Lizzie is a little bit different. Lizzie will start off with the second auto and then the first auto and finally the active skill. Yes, which means that in my opinion, Kao actually pose more threat. Yes, Kao is more dangerous. 
just because of the skill activation sequence. Once you click or confirm, confirm it will not miss because currently in my server everyone is playing accuracy evasion, accuracy evasion, evasion up to 90% evasion. Yeah, 90% evasion is considered to be the highest or 95% some of them can do it. So if we are to check on the first five ranking, what are their team composition? Let us see. Our current champion in the Asia server, Atmos Kaoru Kados Prospera Divana. And second one, Atmos Prospera Divana Kaoru Kados, the same team. Okay, the same team. Number 4, Atmos, Prospera, Lizzy, Kados, Divana. So the difference is Lizzy and Kao. Well, this is, this is mine. Atmos, Prospera, Kados, Divana, Kao. Number 6, so we have a ref. Yeah, the difference is between Prospera and Aref. Atmos, Kaor, Kados, Prospera, Divana, the same team. Zemma, Kaor, Prospera, just their Kados. Zama, Aref, Akura, Kados, Divana. Atmos, Lizzy, Kados, Kaor, and Marcus. Oh, the new one, Marcus. Well, to be honest, I am afraid of fighting this team because yes, I use this team as my defense. Everything currently everything in the arena is down to the accuracy and evasion. Yeah, accuracy, evasion and the activation of the transcendent skills. Opponent Divana is opening, so I have to use my Kados. Yeah, actually I want I wanted to interrupt, but yeah, somehow they got stunned. Yeah, I think from the last video that I posted about the arena, yeah, comparing to my last video, I have actually changed the runes of all my heroes. Yes, I have completely changed it to fit in the current meta. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise it's very hard for me to fight in the current meta.
Wow. Wow. Luckily, that cut on me. Yes, whenever I see Kao wanted to activate his active, yeah, sometimes it's like it's very scary to be honest. Because if the transcendent skill passive really kicks in, then it is very painful. Marcus. Yeah, I have got Marcus recently. Yeah, I have got Marcus and Zenon recently. But I haven't got the time to really test them out yet. Yeah, maybe around this week I will try to build him up. Yeah, together with Zenon and test him out in the arena. Yeah, whenever we see a transcendent card or especially a 64 card or, or a 64 lazy, we always tend to avoid them. It's like, wow, if the transcendent skills really kick in and they are like hitting multiple hits, it is seriously very dangerous. Yeah, seriously. Well, previously my KO hits very hard. You guys can see like my KO is hitting like maybe around 7k to 10k damage in his active skill. Yeah, in this in this team maybe it is not possible to reach that high because my Divana is not here. Because Divana 30% attack buff is actually pumping his damage high. Yes, to a high level enough. But unfortunately for this team composition, yes, I have tested out using Lizzie and Kao. Yes, I did not use Divana here. One of the reasons is because I don't have a duplicate Divana. KSY Yes, because I don't have a duplicate Divana which means that I couldn't transcend a Divana So I may stick more to using Lizzy because somehow Rangers, range type Net5 like Kaor and Lizzy and Lin They love me so much Yeah They always appear Wow, a series of stun. Luckily the power is not activating. Otherwise, yeah. Seriously, I may have a risk of losing. To be honest, actually I look up at Xenon a lot. Yeah. I'm short of the Awakening Incarnation, so I haven't really built my Xenon well. But of course, sometimes you guys may see that, wow, in the defense, that guy looks very strong. But in reality, when you try to use him in the, I mean, you try to use him in your, yeah, when you are doing offense 
or when you try to use him in the offense yeah when you try to use him in the offense the result is actually not that good but looking at the opponent when they are using them for defense looks like wow they can do everything yeah it's like why my atmos passive kicks in very little but your enemy's atmos passive is always activating something like that the current champion wow so he is so lucky to have a transcendent divana transcendent uh who is that name again transcendent Kados, Transcendent Chaos, Kados, sorry, Transcendent Kados and Transcendent Kaor. Well, when I see him, of course, I will skip him. This guy rank is so high with his RF. So, yeah, his RF could be dangerous. Yeah, I think it's this guy. This guy last time when I tried him, yeah, his RF is like killing my Kados extremely fast. Yeah, co confirm is this guy. This guy, the ref is very dangerous. Yeah, but the ref is dead. But yeah, Kao is still there. It's not ended yet. Please, no slowdown effect, please. No. Whew. That's close, man. Wow. Yeah, this guy Uref is seriously painful. I remember this guy. Yeah, sorry, I can't read Korean words, but I remember the Korean characters of this guy. Only this guy I remember because his Uref, last time his Uref, before I changed my rune, I couldn't beat this team, to be honest. I tried him like a few times and I couldn't win. Because his Uref is like aiming my cards first and then his Uref is killing my team one by one. And it's like, yeah, the threat there is not only the Uref, it's like, the Kaor there is also killing the fire types, the, my fire types hero very fast as well. Yeah, there are some players Kaor that could immediately kill my Kadus, especially when the Kaor activates the activate. Wow, that's a very fast active. But that's normal because in the, in the arena offense, they actually have the bonus energy gain in a defensive team. Wow, don't hit myself, oh my god. This is because of the Uref job. But, yeah, what can you do with you soloing alone? Yeah, the best you could do is kill my Kadu. Yeah, but you couldn't kill it as well, haha. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that one was joking around. Because, yeah, I got a trauma, I got a trauma from the Uref. Well, to be honest, I don't want to touch the team with the same, with the same defense as mine. Well, what is that? The Divana is still five star. I think maybe he just got his Divana, or maybe he select his team wrongly. Yeah, he saw his he selected the wrong Divana. Yeah, hopefully by hitting this Divana, my next summon can be a duplicated Divana. No, no, no. Oh my god. That is seriously unlucky. Wow. You see that? Wow. So I lost to a team with a 5 star Divana. I think he is setting a trap. Yeah, he's like luring a lot of people to attack. Yeah, but it's actually all because of a car or. Well, when fighting the team with car or bringing Lizzie actually give you some disadvantage. Because the reason is 
the opponent always have a chance to start their active first. And if the Chaos start their active first, and then, wow, it's like, yeah, a lot of us will be good. You guys see that? It's like, yeah, the one contributing to the team is not the Divana, it's actually the Kao. Yeah, should be because of his transcendent skill is kicking in. No, I don't believe this. Well, I think when he's when he checked his defense history, he see that I lose two time to a five star divana. I think he he might be laughing there. Yeah. This is better, right? So, from this match, you guys see that I bring full attacker team, Kaor and Lizzy. Even if I change my Kaor with Lizzy, do you think that I can win this? I would say no. I would say no. So now let's back to discussion on Lizzy versus Kaor. So you guys see that I have both transcendent Kaor and both transcendent Lizzy. So I won't be yes, I, it's like I won't be picking on my favorite. Of course, definitely Lizzy here is more pretty. She is more beautiful compared to Kaor, which can win the award of the most yeah the one of the most ugly monster. Yes, I think Kaor can win the award. Yeah. Well, Lizzy can also win the award of being one of the most pretty hero there. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I won't be... It's like, yeah, I won't be picking on my favorite. Because I have both, I have used both of them in the arena. Sometimes I have used Lizzy in my attack without Kao. Sometimes I have only used Kao without Lizzy. Sometimes I use, I use both of them. But of course, in this video today, I am using both of them. If your opponent team have Kaor or if the arena in your server is full of a lot of Kaor, picking Lizzy might be a bad idea. The reason is because most of the time your opponent would start his or her active first. If the Kaor start first, one meteor, one meteor dropping down with follow-up auto skills would actually kill Lizzy pretty fast, pretty fast. 